Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, a free site, bettingangle.us, a free site. You know, I'm still recovering from uh, Kobe's death. Let me just offer some thoughts, um, some positive, some a little bit edgy. You know, basketball fans are protective, right? They really are. I'm a Knicks fan. I remember being a little kid. I still consider the best backcourt I ever saw to be Clyde Frazier and Earl the Pearl Monroe. And those guys are well in their 60s right now, right? Well, let me just tell you, in the 1980s, there was a moment in basketball, and if you were into the sport at the time, you knew it was a moment, right? You had a guy named Magic Johnson, and he was throwing alley-oops to his former college teammate, James Worthy, both guys the first pick of the draft, right? They had a center, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, first pick of the draft, right? They had a three-time scoring champ, Bob McAdoo, on the team, right? They would have Defensive Player of the Year, Michael Cooper, on the team. They would run up and down the court the whole time, right? The press gave them the nickname Showtime. You knew it was basketball the way it should be played. You understood that there was everyone else, and then there were the Lakers, right? You knew that if you were going to watch an NBA Finals, the team coming out of the West was likely going to be the Los Angeles Lakers, right? Fans are real protective of that legacy. So then, you had another moment, right? Some guy who wore a lot of gold, this was early on, wore a lot of gold. Um, he'd be wearing a hat, the hat would be off at the side, they'd be talking to him, he was a young guy, straight out of college, and he'd be talking about his supporting cast, right? The guy was utterly clueless that he was dealing with the Chicago press corps, right? So, they froze him out of the All-Star game. He's in the All-Star game, guys wouldn't pass him the basketball. Not only that, this was the East. So in the playoffs, he kept running into a group. We'll call them Bird, McHale, and Parrish, right? And they would rough up the Chicago Bulls in playoff after playoff, right? The player, Michael Jordan, even scored more than 60 in a game. The Celtics still won that series. Folks, the series weren't close. You had another team. Ended up being NBA champions multiple times. The Pistons, who came up with something called the Jordan Rules. And you understood that Michael Jordan could not come down the lane against Detroit without getting hammered. So then, of course, you had the passing of the torch. You had an NBA Finals. Jordan and the Bulls break through, get into the Finals. And there they are about to play the Lakers when Magic Johnson blows out his hamstring. Well, Jordan then goes on a run that to me makes him the best basketball player I have ever come across, right? Jordan with a guy named Scottie Pippen redefined the sport, right? I mean, redefine it, understand, the most dominant performance I've seen in a series is Jordan against the Phoenix Suns right before he retires the first time. That's the player who I thought of as the best in history. It seemed like a high school tournament with one pro player. That's how dominant Jordan was in that NBA Finals. I believe he averages over 40 points a game. And of course, he's the best defender on the court. Right? Jordan when he exits the first time from the NBA is a Babe Ruth figure. Don't believe me, that's what Jerry West believes, 
right? So, you're mindful of the Lakers, right? You don't want anything tainting your memory of Showtime, the level they had at the time, right? You don't want anyone approaching or challenging Michael Jordan because this is a guy who came up, did it the hard way, right? Gets by the Chicago Press, the Boston Celtics, the Detroit Pistons, the Los Angeles Lakers. If you remember the era, the Portland Trail Blazers, right? The Blazers packed the box against him in an NBA Finals. Jordan starts shooting threes. Hits so many, he shrugs at the crowd. Right? So into that chasm comes a kid out of high school. Number eight. Right? He's a Laker. Whatever he does, you're thinking, look, man, you know, this Laker, Mount Rushmore, right? Wilt, Elgin, Jerry, Kareem, Magic, Worthy. You have to earn your way in. So the fact that Kobe Bryant's a Laker had you a little bit suspicious of him, right? You know, it's, hey, be great or go home, right? It's like being quarterback for the San Francisco 49ers. After Montana, after Steve Young, look, you know, being a pro bowler is not enough. You know, are you elite, right? Put differently, after Jerry and after T.O., if you're a wide receiver for the 49ers and you want to be in the conversation, Folks, it's a mountaintop you have to climb. So here's Kobe, and they're trying to pub him and stuff like that. Jerry West makes a trade for him. You're hearing about him playing with pros and practice while in high school. But you're thinking, look, man, you know, this is a rookie who still needs to prove himself. Then you saw the guy's game. There's an all-star game where he actually is trying to D up Jordan hard and you're saying, whoa, whoa, talk about clueless. Right? You got the feeling Kobe wanted to be Michael Jordan. Right? You're like, whoa, you know, it's it's bad enough. You're here trying to be a star on the Lakers. Now you're trying to show us that you're the next Jordan. Right? That you know, that's as ridiculous as a young person trying to show us they're the next Willie Mays. Right? Then he had teammates. Now, history seems to have forgotten this. Kobe wasn't the most popular guy on his basketball team. Right? Shaquille and a bunch of guys are a little bit quiet about this. But I didn't get the feeling Kobe got along with people like Rick Fox. Understand, the Lakers had vets. Here's this young guy who averages less than 10 points a game his rookie year. Less than 10. And he's taking a lot of shots and stuff like that. You can imagine, vets on the team are like, gee, who's, who's this kid? Understand, by the time Shaquille O'Neal becomes a Laker, he had already been to the NBA Finals with the Orlando Magic. Right, so here's Kobe, and you thought, come on now. Isn't this guy trying to rush things a little bit? Right? Is Zion Williamson going to join Shaquille O'Neal and a veteran team and then start trying to be one of the main guys, you know, after coming straight out of high school? You know, so let's just say there was heavy resistance to Kobe. Right? We don't want to remember it that way. There was heavy resistance. When I saw Kobe early on, I kept thinking, you know, this guy's not magic. This guy is not MJ. Right? You know, the the you know, what's this guy doing in the All-Star game? I know why MJ's in the All-Star game. What's what's this guy doing in the All-Star game? Well then Kobe gets a little older. We get to the end of the nineteen nineties. 
and you start to realize that athletically, athletically, Kobe can match Michael, right? And both are freak athletes. You start to notice that Kobe's kind of wilt in reverse, right? Will Chamberlain was a big time scorer. And then he later learns to defer and play with his teammates, right? It ends up with Wilt winning the assist title from the center position, and it ends up with the Lakers at one point winning 33 games in a row and winning the NBA championship. Well, with Kobe, you started to notice on the Laker teams, right? We started calling them the Shaq-Kobe Lakers, right? Shaq and Kobe, you understood what that meant. You started to notice that whatever the team needed, Kobe Bryant could give them. Some nights they needed a defensive stopper. Kobe Bryant was the defensive stopper. Let me just say, I've seen a lot of guys play defense. I think what separates Jordan from Kobe and LeBron and Curry is defense. Right? Jordan brought great defense every night. During the Shaq and Kobe years, Kobe brought great defense every night. Couldn't maintain it as he got older, but he was dominant as a defender during the Shaq-Kobe years, right? If you needed offense, this is while Kobe's deferring to Shaq, who's scoring more than anyone else on the team. Kobe, when needed, could get you the offense. It was almost on demand, right? Shaq's cold, the team needs a boost. Kobe could go out and get you 30. <clears throat> so by the end of the three-peat, everyone understood that this kid wasn't hype. That he was a great Laker. That for him, it was all about winning. That Jordan wasn't just a role model for him. Wasn't just an image for him. You understood that to Kobe, Michael Jordan was a way of life. Right? Kobe, legendary. In terms of keeping himself in shape. In terms of demanding that teammates practice with him. In terms of being a gym rat. Right? The Jordan idea that the game, the real game, is played in practice. You understood all of that. So then the Lakers fell apart. Right? History seems to have forgotten Rip Hamilton and Ben Wallace and the Detroit Pistons. Totally revamped. Right? Not Zeke. Joe, you know, Edwards, uh, Dantley. No, no, this was a later incarnation of the Pistons dominating, dominating the Lakers in an NBA Finals. That's how it falls apart, folks, right? GP, Gary Payton, shows up. Payton later would get a ring with the Miami Heat, right? Carl Malone shows up with the Lakers, Right? The Lakers fall apart. If Karl Malone doesn't get injured, maybe they stay together. But the Lakers fall apart and derail. Shaq ends up leaving. Right? The Lakers swoon for a while. Then we get a different Kobe. The Lakers add Andrew Bynum. The Lakers get Paul Gasol. Rather than be Robin, the Shaq's Batman. Here is Kobe, but he's kind of like the father of the team. You notice that he's a superstar who's also traffic cop. Kobe, the leader, shows up. Right after the Heat win and Shaq asked the question, Kobe, how does my ass taste? Now, keep in mind, 
right? Tell me how my ass tastes. Keep in mind, Shaq could have called out anybody. He had gone to an NBA Finals with Penny. He had just beaten Dirk. He was on top of the world having won another ring. Having won a ring post-Lakers. Shaq understood of all the people he had played with. Of all of them. The person he needed to call out was Kobe Bryant. That's how big Kobe was. So after the call out, after a lot of people are saying, hey, could Kobe win anything without Shaquille O'Neal? Kobe goes on to win rings. <laughs> right? Kobe wins with Bynum and Gasol. Then Kobe's best moment in my eyes. I think this moment tells you who Kobe Bryant is. Right? Kobe had gone head to head for years with Ron Artest. Very few guys in the league could get under Kobe's skin. Ron Artest could. Right? Artest and Kobe, those were epic battles. So here's Ron Artest down on his luck, struggling to stay in the league. Has gotten a mental health diagnosis. You know that there is no way the Lakers would have picked up Ron Artest without Kobe's blessing. You know that. You know that. Then you saw the guys on the court. And this is Kobe as a father, quite frankly. Right? Artessa times would get a little emotional. Kobe Bryant would walk over to our test. Kobe was kind of like a big brother, father type, role model type. Kobe keeps our test on the rails and the Lakers end up winning a championship. Right? So I'll just say this. Talk about pressure on a guy. Right, you show up and you want to be the next Michael Jordan and you're about to play for the Lakers. To me, this is the problem that whoever replaces Tom Brady in New England's going to face. Right, the fan base for years, no matter what the guy does, the guy could be Montana, no matter what the guy does, that New England fan base is going to say, hey man, that's fine, but you're not Tom. Right, here's Kobe in Magic's town. Let's, let's be clear about it. Los Angeles is Magic's town. At least it was before Kobe got there. And Kobe makes it work. Right, Kobe's number in high school was 24. Right, 23 Jordan's number plus one. Right, he's the next. Right, Kobe switches to 24 with the Lakers. Right, here he is channeling Michael Jordan. I'm telling you, folks, Jordan's been retired for more than 20 years. I'm still a Michael Jordan guy. Right, Jordan defines an era. Here's Kobe going after that legacy because Kobe's the ultimate competitor. Right, Kobe's a guy who would try to compete against Babe Ruth. Jim Thorpe, right? You know the personality type. If he were taller, he'd try to compete against Wilt and Kareem. Be the best or go home. Right? Kobe wanted to be the best. And all I could say is, even Jordan people like me watched him and then realized this is an elite talent. You know, I have to say, on his best days, on his best days, you know, Kobe, Kobe was Jordan. Right? And so there are very few players, very few, who you would think about as the best you've seen, the best of an era. Right? Let me just say, for me, 
in the post Showtime era, there are four guys who stand out. Right? Four guys who really define the game. Jordan, we'll call him the best, at least from this scene. Right? Kobe, right? I, you know, in the post Jordan era, Kobe, right? In terms of athleticism, to me, is the most Jordan player, right? The electricity Kobe brought to the game. Jordan-esque, right? Then there's LeBron James. Now, I'll just say this. LeBron's probably more skilled, more skilled than Jordan and Kobe, right? The LeBron era with the Miami Heat, you're going to have a very hard time very hard time finding a more efficient player in history. Right? Foregone conclusion that his shooting percentage was going to be over 50%. Foregone conclusion. Right? Foregone conclusion that he was going to have seven assists and at least seven boards per game. Right? LeBron's an absolute machine with the Miami Heat. Right? I just don't think LeBron played defense as well as Jordan and Kobe did at their best. Right? And to me, Jordan and Kobe are freak athletes, quick twitch muscles, Fred Astaire. Right? They could leave their feet and then decide what to do. I think LeBron is a little bit more scripted than that, and I don't think LeBron is quite the athlete. The other two guys are. Right? Then there is a fourth guy. Now keep in mind, uh, I'm in the Bay Area, and I remember when we were here thinking it was a gimmick. Some guy pulling up two, three feet behind a three point line. That many threes a game. How do you go a season where you hit more than 400 threes? Right? Steph Curry, to me, belongs in the conversation with Jordan, Kobe, LeBron, right? But Curry, who led the league in steals one year, people need to recognize that, wasn't the shutdown defender, and I mean shutdown defender, that Jordan and Kobe were during their defensive runs. Jordan's defensive run lasts the entire Chicago Bull tenure of his career. I'll concede when he's a wizard, he wasn't that great defensively, but that was after years away from the game. That's when he's knocking on 40. Right? Kobe has a defensive run that lasts the three-peat. In fact, I'll say it lasts all the way into Detroit. Right? But that's about half the time of Jordan's defensive run. LeBron makes the all-defensive team. He makes the all-defensive team. Right? But I get the feeling LeBron is just a shade below Jordan, Kobe, Jerry West, we'll name another Laker. Right? Jerry West when it comes to defense. By the way, Jerry West, his last year, when they started counting steals, Average more than two steals a game. Well, more than two steals a game. Right? And so I'll just say this. Uh, we lost a great player. One of the all-time greats. Right? I remember watching a game. He was playing against the Phoenix Suns. And he was unguardable. Right? That's the feeling you got with prime Kobe and prime Jordan, and LeBron and Curry. There are just some games where they're just flat out unguardable. So he 
destroys the Phoenix Suns. It was like a nuclear weapon out there during conventional warfare. He just destroyed it play after play. So he destroyed the Phoenix Suns. And Alvin Gentry was their coach at the time. And Gentry just looked dumbfounded. So in the post-game interview, a reporter said, what did you think of Kobe? And Gentry's response was, that wasn't Michael. That's how dominant Kobe was. Um, this is a major loss. This is one of the all-time great Lakers. They're two different Kobe eras, right? One with Shaq, three rings. Post-Shaq, two rings. Think about that. Kobe as the young kid out of high school who veterans resent on his own team. Then you have Kobe as the guy who's helping guide Andrew Bynum. The guy who welcomes Ron Artest to the team and is patient, is helping Artest be great. Right? Both, both are all-time players. I'm still in shock and it's days later. I was going to try to make a video yesterday. I just realized I wasn't in good enough shape to do so. Right? I'll concede I view MJ as the best. Right? But wow. You know, and I concede I, ver I first viewed Kobe with suspicion. I thought, is this hype? Is this the NBA trying to get behind some young player? You know, I'm one of those people who questions whether Zion Williamson is as good as Charles Barkley. I think great players, truly great players, come around once a millennium. I mean, you know, very infrequently, right? Very infrequently. When I talk about guys who could be the all-time best, I know I'm leaving some real talented players off the list, right? James Harden, spectacular scorer. Uh, Kevin Durant, right? Not quite the defender that Jordan, Kobe, and LeBron were, right? But I'll just say, you know when you run into superior talent. And Kobe, some nights, was simply unguardable. So let me just say this. So I, uh, this is the last story I'll, I'll have. So I traveled to Vegas. This is years ago. And I'm in a cheap hotel. This is the Sahara. <laughs> Way out there, right? Over by Westgate, if you know Vegas. I'm at the Sahara. And the Sahara is on its last legs, right? So I'm in the sports book and I'm with a friend, right? We're just there to have drinks and gamble and stuff. And we're on our way out to get a bite to eat. Uh, back then, Sahara's sports book was so rinky dink. It was run by some outfit called Leroy's, right? So, of course, the book is filled with Laker fans. They want to watch the upcoming Laker game. So some Laker fan sees me, right? I may have been wearing Warrior gear or something like that or Nick gear, I'm not sure. And he uh, he starts mouthing off to me and he asked me, this is what Laker fans used to do back then, what I thought about Kobe. Because Kobe, quite frankly, was a controversial figure, right? So, you know, we talk for a little bit and I'm basically saying, hey, Kobe's good, but he's not MJ. Right? So I leave. So then I come back. There's a bigger crowd now in the sports book. These Laker fans are still there. But there's a bigger crowd now in the sports book. And there's a hush. Right? So something big has happened. Right? You know, something big's happened. So I walk in. One of the Laker guys sees me, motions to me, so I'm like, gee, what, what's this about? So I look on the TV, and they flash the fact that Kobe Bryant at that moment has scored more than 70 points in the game. Right? Kobe would close the game with 80 
one points. So you can imagine the Laker guy mouths off me a little bit. I had nothing to say. When Kobe was on his game, he was unguardable. Right? There's just no other way to put it. He was unguardable. Let me hear from you. If you feel I've been fair to Kobe, if you remember the era a little bit differently. I remember I was listening to Kobe do a rap song with Tyra Banks just back in the day. And I was laughing. I thought, this guy really is this deluded. I remember seeing young Kobe and thinking, come on now. You know, I thought Jerry West was off his rocker. I think the Lakers gave up Vlade Divac or, or someone like that for Kobe, high school player. And I just thought, you got to be kidding. Right? The best thing early on that could be said about Kobe was that Jerry West thought he was special. Well, Jerry was right. He was special. Right? As I've said, older teammates had issues with Kobe. Kobe wins over the locker room on his way to three rings with Shaq, right? I know he and Shaq had a falling out, but then Kobe regroups and wins multiple rings after that, right? Great player. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.